Hey, 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 and welcome back, everyone. I am your host, the phenomenal Miss James, master motivator, commander of rooms and stages, catalyst of inspiration, designer, thinker, influential speaker, teacher, student, lover, sister, daughter, friend. Welcome back to the podcast. It's so great to see you all. If this is your first time here, thanks for stopping in. And if you've been here, as always, thank you for coming back again. Day five of the Winning the War in Your Mind devotional commences as such. You cannot control what happens to you, but you can control how you frame it. The GOAT, greatest of all time, of reframing was the Apostle Paul. Paul had a strategic plan for advancing the gospel. His plan was to go to Rome. If he could get to Rome and preach Jesus to the leaders there, the city could become a launch pad to spread the gospel all over the world. When Paul finally got to Rome, it was not to share Jesus with government officials. He went there as a prisoner. He was locked up under house arrest, chained to a rotating contingent of guards, awaiting a possible execution. Paul prayed for an opportunity, but it was not happening. Paul's circumstances were out of his control. Circumstances are almost always out of our control. You've been where Paul has. You thought, if I could just get this degree, I will get that job. You got the degree, but you did not get the job. You planned on being married by now, but you have not found Mr. or Mrs. Wright as yet. Or you did find and marry the right person, but everything went wrong. This is not the way life was supposed to go. You've been praying for years for your prodigal child, but God has not answered that prayer. Paul was in that situation. Circumstances he did not want and could not control. He wrote to the church at Philippi about what was happening to him. What might he have said? He could have written, Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me really sucks. I want to spread the good news through preaching to government officials, but that did not happen. As a result of this hell I've been through, I've decided prayer doesn't work and I am never going back to church again. But that's not what Paul wrote. Could have been, but no. Remember, Paul couldn't control what happened to him, but he could control how he framed it. Here's what he actually wrote to the Philippians. I want you to know, my dear brothers and sisters, that everything has happened to me here has helped me to spread the good news. For everyone here, including the whole palace guard, knows that I am in chains because of Christ. And because of my imprisonment, most of the believers here have gained confidence and boldly speak God's message without fear. Philippians 1 verse 12 to 14, NLT version. Paul was saying, I had a plan, but God had a better plan. This is a whole different way to advance the gospel than what I was thinking. God has blessed me with prison guards who are chained to me. They have no choice but to listen to me tell them about Jesus. These soldiers have the ear of influential leaders. And get this, every eight hours they chain a new guard to me. And they think I'm a pri- and they think I'm the prisoner. Ha! God is moving. I can't wait to see what he does next. You cannot control what happens to you, but you can control how you frame it. That's why the third tool to change your thinking is the reframe principle, reframing your mind, restore your perspective. That is the end of this devotional. How important a reminder for us. In the previous devotional, we talked about declaring our victory through the word of God. We talked about taking certain um, scriptures and, and making affirmations out of them, consistently feeding our thoughts, feeding our minds, feeding our spirits with the word of God so that we can reframe and reshape our minds. 
And in the previous devotionals, we echoed the same about the attacks of the enemy and the, the fact that the mind is the, the last frontier, right? It's the, it's the battlefield. It's a battlefield that if we're not putting guards in their rightful places and if we're not consistently being aware of the potential attacks of the enemy, something as, as, as harmless, as seemingly harmless as you're wanting to do something and you hear the voice say, a little voice say, mm, you probably won't be any good at that, right? To be able to recognize, instead of sinking into that moment and saying, yeah, that probably won't be too good, I'm just going to leave it alone, give up the idea, recognizing that, whoa, 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 whoa here, that's not a voice of God. God wouldn't have told me you probably won't be too good at that. That's not God. That is the enemy, right? Because the word of God tells us that for I can do all things, all things. You can do all things. We can do all things, not just small things, right? Large things, medium-sized things, as I like to say. But God said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that is the place that we're going to rest. That's the belief that we're going to take on. So something as seemingly harmless as a little voice saying, you probably won't be good as that. Recognizing that, whoa, that's, a pl that's the enemy. Coming to rob, kill, steal, and destroy. And we have to armor up. Put on the whole armor of God, as the scripture said, and be mindful of this. And today's devotional talks about the reframing of the mind, that things are going to happen that's outside of our control, right? We got the degree. We said we're going to get the job. We need the degree to get the job. You get the degree, you don't get the job, right? Or we say we need the job to change our lives. You get the job, it don't change your life, right? I was sitting at brunch with a girlfriend of mine. Uh, it was my birthday birthday brunch happy birthday to me Woo -hoo, praise god um that in itself is a testimony so we're sitting at brunch and she says that she was chasing a career for a, a number of years and i remember wholeheartedly because we prayed together and and I, I went through some of the process with her and encouraged her to keep believing that in god's rightful timing if it's his will he'll give it to her and so she was chasing this career believing that it was going to change her life some way somehow and fast forward all these years later, not getting the career, she kept, things kept coming up that they kept telling her no, wait, etc. And to this point in time, whatever it is that she was desiring and she was aiming for, you know, moving, getting a new a house, a new apartment, um, getting certain things, certain uh, financial things in order that she was hoping for the job for, she has accomplished through the grace of God without that job that she was De determined to get you know like Paul said hey I had a dream I had a plan but God had a, has a bigger plan Oprah said that too I had a dream but God has a bigger dream for us and believing that it's going to work out it's going to work out and I have to affirm that in myself too because there are moments where I have a plan here's my plan I'm going to execute it in this amount of days this amount of weeks and it's just going to it's going to go smoothly but we recognize that we live in an imperfect world right in a high percentage of the time the plan is not going to go as how you plan <laughs> as how you planned it right the people who you plan to show up may not be the ones that show up right the cost that you had in mind might not be the cost that it takes right and the time frame that you had for it to happen might not be the time frame that it happens in right so remaining flexible and keeping a positive outlook despite the challenges that come up see paul said God's going to work it out, and God is working it in a way. See, I thought I was going to come into Rome, and I was going to go into these government official offices, and I was going to tell them about Jesus, and boom, you know, whole, all Rome saved. But instead, he came into Rome as a prisoner, right? A prisoner. And even like, think about Joseph. Joseph came into, he was a prisoner at one point before he um, became, was a part of the kingdom, right? Uh, and could be the right-hand man of the king to, to speak, to, to prophesy and speak certain things. Uh, perhaps I will refresh and touch on that, that scripture in another devotional, but sometimes it's, it's not the way in which that we think that things are going to happen, that they happen. And so we've got to remain open-minded and we've got to remain flexible to God moving in our situations, allowing ourselves to be used by God and learning to trust that God is our shepherd. We shall not want. 
He is our great provider. He brings us to lay in sweet green fields of grass by running flowing waters. And it's an opportunity for us to rest in him, to take it all in, and to know that if Papa, if you're my good, good father, I know I'm anxious right now, but take it away from me. I know we've got fears right now, but take it away from us. Remind us in this moment that we have to fellowship and build with you of who you are. Remind us of who you are. Help us to have that fresh perspective, that positive outlook, that although it may not look good, it is good, and it's working for our good, okay? So again, the devotional says, we cannot control what happens to us, but we can control how we frame it. We can control how we respond to it. That is why changing our thinking right reframing our mind is so important in the restoring of our perspectives now let's get to the scriptures so roman 12 in a new international version the niv version says therefore i urge you brothers and sisters in view of god's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to god this is your true and proper worship do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by renewing of our mind, of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Philippians 1 NIV. Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. Philippians 1, NIV, verse 20 and onwards, I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed but will be sufficient courage will but will have sufficient courage so that now as always Christ will be exalted in my body whether by life or death for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain if i am to go on living in the body this will mean fruitful labor for me yet what shall i choose i do not know i am torn between the two I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far, but it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith, so that through my being with you, again, your boasting in Christ Jesus will abound on account of me. Whatever happens, verse 27, whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then, whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in the one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel. And that is the end of our devotional today, um, dear friends, family, and loved ones. Father God, in this moment, we call on you. We want to say thank you first and foremost because we are to come into your courthouse with praises on our lips and gratitude and thank yous as that is our form of worship. So thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your guidance. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your provision. Thank you for the ability to fellowship with like-minded believers. Thank you for this opportunity, dear God, to share this devotional, to remind us to continue to guard our minds, which is the new frontier, the new battlefield, to continue to remind us to feed and nourish our spirits, to continue to remind us that we live in an imperfect world and we ourselves are imperfect people, though perfect through you and nothing will go as perfectly as planned, but that it's all working together for our good. Father God, at this moment, I surrender, we surrender the plans that we have for ourselves. And we ask you, Lord, to step in and to stir up and to make it as how you would want it. 
forgive us for the times that we try to take control and do all things with our might as if we knew the beginning and the end forgive us father as human beings we can be fickle sometimes and our nervousness cause us to try to take steps ahead of you instead of waiting on you lord thank you for the ability to wait thank you for the gift of your holy spirit thank you lord that you guide our steps thank you that you are the alpha and the omega and thank you lord god that whatever the plans the dreams the hopes that we have in this present moment god that you have a bigger plan, a bigger dream, a bigger goal for us, Father. And we pray that you help us to exercise patience. We need patience, God, in this moment. We need peace. Thank you for your promises and thank you for your favor here on earth, God. Thank you that you are a good, good father and our good, good shepherd. There's nothing that we should ever want. There's nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lost, nothing stolen. In the words of Uncle Creflo, thank you, Lord, that there's no lack nothing lacking that we live the abundant life that all things come to us abundantly as we need it so that we are blessed and we're also blessed to be a blessing thank you for the reframing of our thoughts and minds thank you lord god for the purification of our spirits thank you for restored joy restored hope restored peace thank you for healing thank you for health and health is wealth and thank you that while we are here on planet earth and you're giving us more days and more times that we use it wisely to bring glory to your kingdom. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And amen. Be blessed, everyone. Thank you for those of us who are tuning into this devotional. May it have, may it have brought some light, some type of positivity I and mean, an encouragement to your spirit. And share it. You know, feel free to share it with someone that you know and love that could use this message. As always, thank you so much. Um, tap into the YouVersion Bible app. I do use it every day and I share it with my friends and loved ones. And um, yeah, I pray that you be blessed in this new week coming up, this new month, this new season, this new time. Be blessed in everything that you do. Go forth and, and go forth in the authority that Jesus Christ has been, get, how, that we've been granted through Jesus Christ by Father God. So thank you. Uh, and as always, drop a comment in the comment section to show that you appreciate it. Thank you so much for your subscribing and thank you so much for your love and your listening. Peace, love, and blessings.